Okay, let's talk about forming the plural in Punjabi. What is the plural? Well, there's the singular in the plural. One computer, two computers. Uh, computers is in the plural. In English, we have a lot of different ways of forming the plural. A lot of the time you just add that S, right? Like boys, girls, computers, lamps, whatever. But you also have deer and deer. One, I saw one deer, I saw two deer in the forest. Or you have ox and oxen, right? Or you have uh, goose and geese. So all kinds of really weird things going on. Uh, in Punjabi, there are exceptions, just like in English, but on the whole, things are, are pretty, pretty regular. But what complicates it is you have masculine and feminine, right? You have gender. Now, the basic patterns that we can look at, uh, essentially you've got masculine, marked nouns. Marked means regular nouns, and I'll tell you the mark in a moment. And irregular masculine nouns, and then you've got feminine and irregular feminine. And then a few patterns within that, we'll go over that in a moment. Um, to begin with the regular nouns though, so the masculine mark is a, uh, right? So if you think of the word for boy, munda, it's got the a uh at the end, munda, boy, and that's a regular marked noun. Whereas the feminine mark is e. So if you think of the word for girl, which has it, it's kuri, kuri. It's got the e at the end and it is feminine. So let's begin by looking at the transformations for the uh, regular marked nouns uh, for masculine. So, as I said, munda, the a uh, changes into an e. Munda, munde. Ik munda, one boy, do munde. Ik munda, do munde. There's also a, a little bit of a change, a slight variation to that. Um, if you have ia, and an example would be rupia, meaning rupee, like an Indian rupee, a Pakistani rupee, um, that doesn't become rupee, but becomes not rupee, but becomes Rupai, Rupai. So a little bit of a change there, but so basically we've got Munda, Munde, Rupia, Rupai, and the ia endings are a lot, a lot less common. They're very, very rare. So what you have to think about mostly are the a endings. Munda, Munde, Munda, Munde. When we talk about unmarked masculine nouns, I'll give you the example: kar, house. They don't change at all. Ik kar, do kar. Very easy. Ik kar, do kar. One house, two houses. Okay, now let's talk about feminine nouns. The good news is they always do the same thing. They add un. Okay, that's an a uh with a nasal sound. Un. Uh, for example, kuri, girl. Ik kuri, one girl. Do kuriya, two girls. Kitab, book. Book is feminine, kitab. Ik kitab, one book. Ik kitab, do kitaban. Do kitaban. So we have kuri, kuriya, kitab, kitaban. Simple. So really to summarize, masculine marked nouns, a, become a, so munda, munde. Masculine unmarked don't change, kar, kar. And feminine nouns all add a. Uh. Kuri, kuriya, kitab, kitaban. Now there are a few exceptions we'll quickly talk about here, a few patterns and exceptions uh, in forming the plural. The first is a really confusing one. I just told you that masculine nouns ending in a uh, are marked, right? But there are also a few feminine nouns which end in a. Uh. And remember that to make feminine nouns plural, you add a. Uh. So how do we add a uh onto a? Uh? Don't say a uh, a. Uh. You add a v in between, a v sound. So let's use the example of the word for language, basha. Basha. So basha becomes basha wang. Ba sha wang. Ba sha Secondly, also along the same uh, path here, there are some nouns which are masculine and end in a, uh, but they're irregular. They don't behave like the normal ones. So munda, ik munda, one boy, do munde, two boys. That's an a uh, masculine noun. But there are a few small, tiny exceptions. Uh, and one example is the word for brother, a very common word. Pra. Pra. So, you don't say ik pra do pre. <laughs> it's not pra pre, uh, like munda munde, but it actually just stays the same. So ik pra do pra. One brother, two brothers. Ik pra do pra. Uh, these are very, very few in number, and I wouldn't worry about these too much. If you ever have a, math, a noun which is ending in an a, uh, you're probably safe if you change the a uh to an a. And um, if you get it wrong, 
people will tell you and you'll be able to figure it all out. You, you can't be afraid to make mistakes with gender and uh, making things plural and exceptions and everything because it happens. And the only way to kind of get this stuff stuck in your head is practice. So don't worry too much about it. Take a risk and by default, go with the most common patterns. Okay, and finally, my next video will be talking about the oblique case, which is how words change when they're followed by post positions. What is all of that? I'll get into that in my next video. But just know that you should know the material in this video before you really try to understand that one. If you don't understand all the plural transformations going on, you'll be confused when you see the plural transformations and singular transformations and everything like that in the oblique. So really try and go over this video, do the exercise that I'll eventually upload, and uh, just get it down pat and move onward. And good luck.